Hi, I am Faisal. This lecture is about introduction to computer programming. I will describe components of computers. I will also explain terms and definitions that are used in programming. So let's get started. This is the presentation summary. I will define computer, components of computer, Turing machine, algorithm, pseudocode, flowchart, computation and computational thinking, software, program, programming and programming languages, syntax and semantics, types of programming languages, then what is Python, why we need to learn programming as engineering students, why engineers need Python, application of programming, and finally some famous programmers who have created softwares for engineers. Let's define computer. A computer is a digital electronic machine that can be programmed to carry out sequences of arithmetic or logical operations. We call this arithmetic and logical operations as computations. This is done automatically. By digital, we mean the device, the electronic device, which work on digital signal. Digital signal is in the form of electric pulses or in the form of zeros and ones. Modern computer can perform generic sets of operations. These sets of operations are known as programs. These programs enable computers to perform a wide range of tasks. A computer system, here note down the word system. A computer system is a complete computer that includes the hardware, operating system, and peripheral equipments. I'll explain peripheral equipments in coming slides. So by system, we mean a complete system which include hardware, main software or operating system and peripheral equipments. And they are required to perform full operation. What is operating system? Operating system is the uh, main computer software. Sometimes by computer system, we, we mean a group of computers that are linked and function together, such as computer network or computer cluster. They are also called computer system. CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit. It is responsible for interpreting and executing commands from other hardware and software. It is in the form of small square with many short round metallic connectors. They are on the back side like this. On its underside, it has many components including arithmetic logic unit, PLU, and control unit, CU. What is ALU? ALU performs arithmetic and bitwise operation on binary integer numbers. There is another unit which is similar to ALU. It is called FPU, which operates on floating point numbers. The control unit directs the operations of the processor. It is basically a binary decoder. It converts decode instructions into 
timing and control signals which directs the operation of other units like memory, arithmetic logic unit, and input and output devices. Register and cache are memories of CPU. CPU stores its data in register. If the data size is increased, it is stored in cache. If the data size is further increased, it is then stored in RAM. And after that, it is stored in hard drive. So let's define register. It is quickly accessible location. It is small amount of fast storage. You have heard the word 64-bit and 32-bit. By 64-bit, we mean a CPU whose register size is 64-bit. And by 32-bit, we mean a CPU whose register size is 32-bit. Bit is the unit of memory. Cache, it holds the future request for that data which can be served faster. The data stored in cache might be the result of earlier computation or a copy of data stored elsewhere. Clock speed. It is the frequency at which processor can generate pulses. It is the speed at which processor perform execute instructions. We call this as processor's speed. Unit of memory. Bit is a single and smallest unit of computer memory. It has only two states. Its value is either 0 or 1. 8 bits makes 1 byte. 1 kilobyte equals 1024 bytes. 1 megabyte equals 1024 kilobyte. And same for 1 gigabyte, 1 terabyte, and 1 petabyte. Random access memory RAM. Random access memory is a form of computer memory that can be read and changed in any order, typically used to store working data and machine code. In Python, memory management resides in RAM. We call it heap. Let's define peripheral devices. It contains input and output devices. It has storage devices such as hard drives, solid state drives, flash drive, storage tapes, input devices such as keyboard and mouse, monitor display, speaker and mic for audio, projector and printer. Computer bus. It is short of Latin word omnibus. It is also called data highway or data bus. It is communication system that transfers data between components of computers. It has hardware components such as wire, optical fibers, and software components such as communication protocols. For example, USB port, Ethernet, these are buses. Basically, computer bus connects the components of computer. The data is transferred through computer bus. ROM, it stands for read-only memory. It stores a software which is called BIOS. This software runs when you turn on computer. When BIOS is running, we call it bootstrapping or booting or booting up. BIOS is a firmware used to provide runtime services for operating systems and programs. When you turn on your computer, BIOS 
perform checks. It locates the operating system and it boots the operating system. Once the operating system is loaded, it takes over the control of computer system and its hardware. GPU is graphics processing units. It is a specialized electronic circuit designed to rapidly manipulate and alter memory to accelerate the creation of images in a frame buffer. It accelerates the creation of images in frame buffer. A frame buffer is a portion of RAM containing a bitmap that drives a video display. So inside RAM, you have a portion, you call it frame buffer. It, which contain bitmap, which drives video display. And GPU accelerate the creation of images in this frame buffer. GPU can be present on video card or embedded on the motherboard or embedded on the CPU die. Modern GPU is used for computations which involve matrices and uh, vector operations and this is what engineers like. Engineers and scientists have increasingly studied the use of GPU for non-graphical calculations including parallel programming. Minimum system requirements for engineering software. This is frequently asked question by engineering students. Preferable CPU is Core i7, but Core i5 or Core i3 will also work. RAM is 8 GB. 4 GB will also work, but performance will be slow, especially during loading of operating system and loading of software. Recommended hard drive is solid state hard drive because the input-output operation is faster in solid-state drives. Dell brand, why? Because I have tested it personally. If you have tested some other brand, you can use it. Preferable CPU is Intel but new AMD processors are also good. You should have good battery for your laptop. You can also buy used laptop. You can use desktop or mobile phones, but both of them have problem that you cannot bring desktop in your class and smartphone has small screen size you will have difficulty when you are going to input by touch screen without mouse and keyboard. Preferable Windows is 11 or 10. If you are using Mac, it will work. If you are expert at computers, you can also use Linux. Turing machine. It is a mathematical model of computation that defies an abstract machine that manipulates symbol on a strip of tape according to table of proofs. This is a simple Turing machine. This is the head which reads or writes the value. This is the tape with cells. This is the table of rules or state. Despite the model's simplicity, given any computer algorithm, a Turing machine is capable of implementing that algorithm's logic. Although this is a very simple machine, but it can run any computation. The machine operates on infinite memory tape divided into discrete cells. So it operates on this tape because this is a mathematical machine, not physical. So the length of this tape is infinite. It is divided into cell. The machine position its head over a cell and read or scan the symbol there. It position itself on a cell from where it read the symbol. 
then based on the symbol and machines on present state in a finite table of user specified instructions the machine first write a symbol into the cell then either moves the tape on the cell left or right then based on observed symbol and machine on state in the table either proceed to another instruction or halts computation what it means it means that let's say the state of this machine is b and it has it is going to read the symbol zero so the state is b it has read the symbol zero what is the next step it will do it will write one in this cell then it will move by one cell towards left and the state of machine will become c this is what it has written and there are two things which machine can do it will either write something or depending upon the state and symbol it will write something or it will halt its operation this machine was invented in 1936 by alan turing algorithm algorithm is a finite sequence of well defined instructions so there are two feature it has limited number of steps and those steps are well defined typically used to solve a class of specific problems or to perform computation it is used to perform calculation work and it uh, solves uh, problems algorithms are used as specification for performing calculation and data processing you can write algorithm in natural language like english language pseudo code flow chart programming language or control tables the concept of algorithm existed since antiquity like algorithm of division which was used by ancient babylonian mathematicians in 2500 bc in the year 825 the muslim mathematician al khwarizmi wrote an arabic language treatise on the hindu arabic numeral system which was translated into latin language during the 12th century the manuscript starts with the phrase dixit al gorzmi which means thus spoke al khwarizmi where al gorzmi was translator's latinization of al khwarizmi's name and from here the word algorithm coined pseudo code is plain language description of the steps in an algorithm it is the steps of algorithm an algorithm is used to solve problem step by step you can think of algorithm as recipe pseudo code often uses structural convention of normal programming language but it is intended for human reading rather than machine reading there are different styles like fortran style c style and mathematical style This is the example code of pseudo code for sum of two numbers. Here it is written in coding style. You can also write pseudo code in plain English. Each line will represent the step of calculation work. So the program starts. It defines number variables. num1 num2 and sum it displays enter the first number the user will enter the number that number will be stored into num1 then it will display enter second number the user will enter second number it will be stored in num2 the two numbers will be added and it will be stored into sum and finally the sum will be displayed and the program will end flow chart flow chart can also be defined as a diagrammatic representation of an algorithm a step by step approach to solving a task so flow chart is another form of algorithm here you are displaying number from 0 to 
the program is started the number i or counter i is set to zero here we have a check conditional check whether our i counter is less or equal to five if it is true then we'll print this i will increment this print by one and repeat the step then again you are going to perform the check if the check is true you perform these two calculation but when this condition is false the program will end in this the circle represent start and end node the square or rectangle represent the instruction the diamond shape represent a conditional check whose answer will be either true or false computation is any type of calculation that includes both arithmetical and non-arithmetical steps and which follows a well-defined model for example an algorithm so computation mean calculations which follows step-by-step -step procedure known as algorithm computational thinking allow us to take a complex problem understand what the problem is and develop possible solutions we can then present these solutions in a way that a computer a human or both can understand computational thinking means to break down your complex problem into algorithm which computer and human both can understand so computational thinking is a way to convert your problem into computer algorithm which can be used to write computer codes it has four steps number one decomposition which means breaking down a complex problem or system into smaller more manageable parts number two pattern recognition means you look for pattern you look for similarities within the problem number three abstraction in which you focus on only important information and discard irrelevant details and finally you create algorithm in which you develop a step-by-step -step solution to the problem or the rules to follow to solve the problem what is app software or package it is a collection of instructions that tells a computer how to work app or software or program they are same okay program a computer program is a list of instructions that tell a computer what to do software software can be a single or collection of programs the only difference between software and uh, an app or software and program is that program do only uh, a list of instructions when many programs are grouped together they become a software what is programming the process activity or act of writing code or computer programs is called programming programming language it is a computer language used in computer programming to implement algorithm now you want to make use of algorithm you need computer language a programming language is a set of commands instructions and other syntax used to create a software program most programming language languages consist of instructions for computers programming language is used to write programs it has set of rules and keywords which computer can understand set of rules is called syntax now what is syntax and semantics syntax mean grammar semantics mean meanings the syntax of a computer language is the rules that define the combinations of symbols that are considered to be correctly structured statements or expressions in that language so you make use of uh, symbols you combine symbols together and those symbols makes a correct statement or statements and expressions so on which rule you should combine these symbols to get statements and expressions those rules are called syntax
they define the structure of uh, language. What is semantics? Semantics is the rigorous mathematical study of the meaning of programming language. Semantics mean what is the meaning of expression or statements, what it will convert into, what it means. Semantics refer to the meaning of a program or what it does when it runs. A semantic error is an error in logic that causes a program to produce incorrect or unexpected outcome. So semantic error is the conflict between what you think and what is the actual meaning of the program. In Python, there is no mechanism to catch semantic errors automatically. Semantic errors are problems with a program that runs without producing error messages, but doesn't do the right thing. To detect semantic errors, you need to use test cases that compares the actual output with the expected output for a given set of input values. So in order to catch semantic errors, you need to create test cases, which will compare your program output with the expected output. Syntax error are detected by the interpreter during parsing and will raise a syntax error exception. So Python will catch this error as syntax error. Here are some examples. While true, print hello world. Here the error is that we have missed colon. While true. Here the error is that we have spelling mistake. We need to remove L. Two quotes plus two. Here the error is that uh, this plus will try to join the next object with this object because here it is string. A plus. Here the error is that you have not provided the second object. This is an example of semantic error. You are taking input of first number into num1, second number into num2, and then you try to add. In your mind, you are assuming that both will be added. But the real meaning of this statement is that input will give you string or text. Second input will also give you text. When you try to add two text, they will be joined, they will be concatenated, and the result will be uh, joining like if it is 2 plus 3 and both of them are string the result will be 23 in order to correct this error you need to put int to cast that string into integer so it will become integer of the string store that in number one and second integer into num2 after converting them into integer both can be added and give you the actual sum with respect to hardware, we have three types of programming languages. First, machine language. It is in the form of zeros and ones. We call it binary. It is close to hardware or bare metal. Second is assembly language. It is in between hardware and uh, high level. You can understand the logic of program very easily in assembly language. The third is high level language in which your full concentration is not on the hardware but only on the logic of a program example of that is c++ python javascript sql and java also fortran and c in machine uh, language your focus is full on the logic of hardware in assembly your focus divides between the hardware and the logic of program in high level language, your full focus is on the logic of program. High level language code is translated into machine binary code using a program which we call compiler. So program, uh, computer program uh, can only be understood by computers once you convert that into binary. And the process of converting your text, your high level language code into binary is called compilation. And for compilation, you need compiler. What is assembler? Assemblers are 
used for assembly language in order to write assembly language you need assemblers which is in between machine and high level interpreter interpreter takes very high level language code and it convert into machine readable code so it translate the high level language code into machine readable code dynamic language i'll explain that in coming slides dynamic language means that command will be executed as you type you write a command hit enter it will be executed line by line a compiled language is one that is primarily compiled to machine code which is executed natively by the cpu on most standard hardware like intel amd arm etc example of this is c c++ and ada these languages are translated directly into binary which cpu can understand however there are certain languages like python ruby and java which are called interpreted languages they are not translated into machine readable code they are the one which are executed either as source code or byte code through a dedicated virtual machine they are run by some programs which are called virtual machine or interpreters so what is virtual machine or interpreter it is a piece of software which interpret and execute instructions from byte code or source code example is java virtual machine or python interpreter so what this interpreter do they read the source code of python or they read the byte code of python and they run them they execute them they do not translate them into binary code whenever the python script compiles it automatically generates a compiled code called byte code so when you run your python it converts into something known as byte code this byte code is not machine readable however there are certain python compilers like pypy which converts your code directly into machine readable the byte code is loaded into python runtime and interpreted by a virtual machine what is virtual machine it is a piece of code which executes the python instruction which reads the python instructions from byte code and then which execute the instructions types there are two meanings of types in programming one is data type the other is programming type type in the world of programming refers to the data type and manipulation that allow that is allowed in a specific programming language it describes the structure of data and how the they are stored in the memory what is the structure of data how it is stored in the memory what operations can be performed on them we call it type or we call it data type example is strings integers boolean and floats on the other hand in programming languages we have uh, types like statically type or dynamically type static type static type language static typing means that types are known and checked for correctness before running your program this is often done by languages compiler for example the following java method would cause a compile error before you run your program here you have declared an integer whose value is 5 then you declared boolean which is supposed to store true or false while uh, you gave it value of integer so here you have a type error 
and this error will be detected before running this whole code. Dynamic type language. Dynamic typing means that types are only known as your program is running. For example, the following Python script can be run without problems. You have defined a function and then you are printing a statement. The function will be only defined, it is not executed. And only print statement will be executed. There is no error in print statement, so it will indeed output high. So dynamic typing has evaluation of data types during runtime. Now this is the same program and you have called this earnest function. In this function, you have string and you are subtracting integer from it. Now this conflict of type and you will have a type error. So if you call this earnest function, it has type error. So as this function runs, the type of this statement will be evaluated and due to mismatch, it cannot be calculated. It will give raise to type error at runtime. Interactive programming, also known as live coding, refers to any computer programming language that allows the creator to make changes to the program while it is already running. So if you are running your program and you are making changes to your program at runtime, you can call that program as interactive programming. Programming paradigm. Programming paradigms are a way to classify programming languages based on their features. The term programming paradigm refer to style of programming. One of the programming paradigm is imperative. The other is declarative. There are more paradigms like uh, OOP paradigm, object-oriented programming paradigm. Let's talk about imperative programming. Imperative programming is a programming paradigm that uses statements that change a program's state. It tells the computer how to accomplish a task step by step. So in this, we write our program step by step. Each step is called statement and these statements change the state of program. They change the uh, state of variables. Declarative programming is a programming language paradigm that is based on logic and focus more on what pro a program should accomplish rather than detailing how that should be accomplished. So here in declarative programming, we focus more on what the program should do instead of how it should do. Object-oriented programming OOP is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects which can contain data and code. In this paradigm, our code is divided into objects which are just like real-world objects which have attributes and methods. These objects contain data and code. Procedural programming is a way of writing programs that follows a series of steps or procedures. In this paradigm, we write our code step by steps. Then we group these steps into something we call procedures. So our code contain procedures and these procedures contain step-by-step -step statements. It is based on imperative programming, which means it tells the computer what to do and how to do it. Functional programming is a way of coding that uses pure functions to create maintainable software. So in functional programming, we create functions. We do not just like declarative 
programming paradigm, we do not declare how that function should run. We only declare the function and it's job of the language to run that function. After defining these terms, we can now define what is Python. Python is an interpreted, interactive, object-oriented programming language. It incorporates modules, exceptions, dynamic typing, very high level dynamic data types and classes. I haven't defined modules. Modules are libraries of Python code. Exceptions are used to trap to catch errors. Classes are used to create objects. It supports multiple programming paradigms beyond object oriented programming such as procedural and functional programming. So it supports multiple programming styles like OOP, procedural and functional. Python combines remarkable power with very clear syntax. This is a power, this is the power of Python that it's, it's readable. You can read the code of Python because it is close to English language. It has interfaces to many system calls and libraries. You can connect your Python to operating system calls and operating system libraries, as well as to various window system. And you can connect to other windows system and is extensible in C or C++. You can extend the functionality of Python by writing your code in C and C++. It is also usable as extension language for applications that need a programmable interface. For example, you have a software and you want to provide a facility to extend your software or to write programming code in your software. So you can use Python for that. Finally, Python is portable, which means that it runs on many Unix variant, including Linux and Mac OS and on Windows. There are probably millions of users, though it is difficult to obtain an exact count. And as per TOB index for March 2023, Python is number one programming language. I have taken these uh, points from uh, Python frequently asked questions, which is available in documentation of Python. Has Python produced successful projects? Are there significant projects done in Python? Yes, you can find the list from this link. Consulting the proceedings from past Python conferences will reveal contributions from many different companies and organizations. High profile Python projects include the mailman mailing list manager and the Zoop application server. From engineering perspective, important softwares are NumPy, SciPy, SamPy, and uh, for CAD framework like Python OCC, CAD Query, which are based on Open Cascade, PyViz, which is based on uh, which is Python visualization. Uh, VTK has a Python interface. Also, finite element softwares like uh, OpenSea Spy. UFM has also Python interface. Rhino has Python interface. Dynamo Revit has Python interface. So there are many big softwares, engineering softwares, which are using Python. Several Linux distributions, most notably Red Hat has written part or all of their installer and system administration software in Python. Companies that use Python internally include Google, Yahoo, and Lucas Film Limited. Even Facebook is using Python, PyTorch AI library 
is written in uh, in Python. Why engineers need Python? Python is a very high level general purpose interpreted language used in science, engineering, data science, and almost all fields. It is based on ABC language, hence very close to English language. So this is a summary of reason why an engineer should use Python. Other reasons are it is very close to English language. You can easily read and understand the logic of code even after many years. You can write and understand program very quickly after learning few basics. These days, many professors, universities, institutions, and researchers prefer Python. Everybody use it. It's free and open source. You can find library and code of your problem field in Python. It has all necessary tools that an engineer need to perform calculations or make his own program. Programming and software development in Python is very fast. You can run it anywhere on Windows, Mac, Linux, Cloud, iPhone, and Android. Regarding point number eight, you can develop your program very fast. You can quickly produce your first program, your first prototype. Uh, the development is very fast in Python. It empowers you to become best professional engineer by apprehending big ideas and concepts in short amount of time. For example, doing linear algebra problems, calculus problems, and AI artificial intelligence problem just by, you can do that just by writing few lines of code. Many best engineering and computational software requires use of Python, like Rhino, Grasshopper, Dynamo, Revit, AutoCAD, UFAM, OpenSeaSpy. It helps to learn and understand better the math and engineering subjects by providing quick calculation steps and then plot using Jupyter Notebook. So you can understand engineering concept in a better way if you perform quick calculation and then you visualize your results. You can create design sheets in Jupyter Notebook that requires only change of input and then print the calculation report. So tomorrow if you are working in a consulting firm, there you need design sheets. You can create your design sheets in Python in which only change will be the change of input, run the calculation and print your design sheets. You will find many engineering and math packages available and downloadable in Python. It is useful for research analysis, plotting and visualization. Why we need to learn programming and especially Python as engineering student or engineering professionals. First, we were performing calculations by hand, then we got calculators, then we got scientific calculators, and now it is time for using advanced scientific calculator or using Python. Computers can solve big matrices even more than a size of 100, 1000 cross 1000. In uh, structural analysis and in computation for dynamics, we have uh, big matrices. They are solvable in programming languages like Python. Sometimes we need to write a specific program using particular algorithm that is not available in existing software. You want to make use of some algorithm which you found in a research paper, and you want to it is and it is not available in existing software package. In that case, you need to write your own code. You need to add feature to existing software using its programming interface. You have uh, already uh, a commercial or some open source software. You are doing your calculation in that. You want to improve your calculation, add more features to your calculation. In that case, you need 
uh, to learn programming. You want to automate tasks, like you want to scrap the web, you want to check the websites, download required data from it. You want to read PDF files. Um, you want to email um, many people. You want to create a website. For all these tasks, you need to know programming. You want to plot, visualize, and create a map. You can use programming or Python in structural analysis, earthquake engineering, blast load analysis, dam break simulation, traffic simulation, GIS, and RS, geographic information system and remote, and remote sensing to create maps, hydrology analysis, channel flow, building information modeling, quantity estimate and planning automation mean to make programs run by itself to perform analysis on large data. You can use programming and to write artificial intelligence AI programs, you need programming. And from internet, you can find more information about these topics. These are famous programmers who created engineering softwares. Ashraf Habibullah is creator of uh, SAP 2000, eTabs, CSI Bridge. Uh, all of them are famous civil and structural engineering softwares. John Walker is creator of uh, AutoCAD and Autodesk. They have uh, created other softwares like AutoCivil, BIM. Frank McKenna is a uh, developer of uh, finite element software, uh, OpenSeas. And the next great programmer can be you. Now, that's all for now. I hope you have learned basic concepts, basic definitions that are used in uh, computer programming. You also learn why you should learn programming, why you should use Python, what are the power of Python. If you have any question, you can ask in comment section, you can ask in Google Classroom.